How is everyone? Yeah. That was a nice intro. I haven't seen that in a while. They sewed your legs back on. That's amazing. Solo, a Star Wars story? Clone Wars, yeah, Clone Wars, yeah. Or, or that, okay. We won't go there then. Pretty cool scene though, I gotta say. You can't, you can't really tell who has seen it, who hasn't. <laughs> it was a weird reaction. Okay. Oh, it is. It's, he said it's on digital now, so yeah, we're Yeah, it's on di digital and it comes out on DVD on the 25th. Okay. If you haven't seen it. So. I mean, I feel like we've passed the, the amount of time that we can keep it quiet. I mean, let, 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 let's talk about it. What was it like to return to the character, man? How cool How cool was that for you? Very cool. It was nice to get that call unexpected. Uh, we were in Guatemala at the time doing a convention. And, uh, and Lynn Hale from Lucasfilm was emailing me and I had a missed call. And I didn't expect to... I, I didn't think in a million years it had something to do with which I can or cannot say if you haven't seen it. But it's, but it's been nice to come back and play that character again. 20 years in the making, I know. So I feel very lucky to be doing it, and it was nice to shave my hair again. So. Yeah, hey, wow. And how, how much of you is in the character of Darth Maul? Because I was... Uh, is it true that the earring was something you added to the character? Yeah. So there's a little stud right in his ear. The one. Well, I wasn't going to add it. I didn't add it for the character. I was just... Accident? It was not. It was not an accident. I, I had my. I wanted my ears. I knew how long I had before I had. To, we were going to start filming. So we were rehearsing for about six weeks. I knew we, I had six weeks before we were going to film. And then um, I met my wife. You know, she was my girlfriend at the time. She had her ears pierced up there, and I quite liked it. So I was kind of going through a rebellious. Maybe you know, landing the part as Darth Maul. That inner dark side came out. And so I thought, you know what? I saw another guy with his ears pierced. And Pretty cool. So I thought, oh, I'll get it done, and I'll have it done on my left side. And then I didn't know we were going to have a, a makeup screen test with George that week, so I just had it done on a Saturday. And then Tuesday or Wednesday, we had the makeup test. So Paul England, the makeup artist, I was worried because I didn't want to take it out because I was told you've got to keep it in for two weeks and then you can take, just pop it in and out whenever you want. And then uh, so he, he painted it black, and George was looking at my left side of my face. I said, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, George, but I just had it done on Saturday. But I will take it. I just need a couple of weeks, but I will take it out. And he says, well, I think Darth Maul would have an earring, don't you think? And I went, yes. <laughs> so and that's why I have a, had the earring. So I had to keep it in. That's amazing. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, because I heard like, the, the Coles notes of that was like it was a, an accident and he loved it, so it stayed in. But that's it's good to finally explain that story. Yeah, I wasn't planning on it because I knew I had so much time before we started filming. Wow. But I was just going through that rebellious kind of stage, you know, uh, and feeling good and feeling lucky on top of the world at 22, landing this big part, yeah. falling in love with my wife, and it was kind of one of those ones. And uh, and thanks to the master, George himself, he, uh, he, he made it part of the character. And also the, the fighting style itself, you, I know you had a lot to do with kind of as, you know, as far as what we see on the screen and how Darth Maul moves and fights, how much of that was actually your input on that? Some, uh, I remember at the time being worried about speaking up because I didn't want to, you know, lose my job. But I worked with such great people, Andres Petridis and Nick Gillard, and I remember them telling me, anything to do with your character, it's, it's up to you, you do what you want. So if I wanted to do any flares or flashy moves, they gave me that freedom. And we rehearsed about 10 hours a day for a few months before we shot the end fight scene. And we got to the point, once the fights were locked down, we were coming up with new ideas that we couldn't change it. Yeah. You know, we were coming up with these fantastic over-the-top ideas. At one point, I was doing a Arabian somersault over Liam Neeson with a lightsaber doing back handsprings. You know, but um, it would have been too much, I think. It, would have been, it wouldn't have been Star Wars. It would have been a martial art movie. Who's, in your opinion, the, the better Jedi in real life? Would it be Liam Neeson or Ewan McGregor? What do you think? <laughs> the both, the both good Jedis. I just... As a fan, I, I didn't want them to kill off Qui Gon. I thought he was a good Jedi. You know, I agree. I thought he was a, as a fan, as a kid growing up with Star Wars, he was someone I would want to see more of. Um, and I didn't get it when, when fans were saying to me, you know, how's it feel to kill uh, Liam Neeson or Qui Gon Jinn? I didn't understand until now, you know, he, he never dies. So, um, 
Yeah, so I, I was hoping, but I understood it was a story of Anakin. I understood that, you know, the bad guy's got to get in and I've got to get chopped in half and, and for the story to, to continue. Yeah, before uh, Last Jedi came out, there were photos of Rey with her new hair, and I, I was trying to spread the rumor online that it was she was Qui Gon's daughter. She literally had the Qui Gon hair, but it never, it never took off. I, I was hoping that'd be the case, though. They gotta bring that guy back. You're right. Yeah, you see, and, and you know what? The spirit in Jedi is yeah. that they can, they can come back. The Force is always strong. So. And I guess the Force has kind of been strong with you for a while because I know I, I read something when you were when you were a kid. You asked your dad to build you a lightsaber. Is yeah, that, is that true? It's true. My, my dad's an you know, electrical engineer, and uh, Star Wars was the first movie I saw on the big screen, and it kind of changed my life because I was copying Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan before I started doing martial arts. We went to see New Hope and Empire Strikes Back at the same time, and that's when I fell in love seeing Luke Skywalker training Yoda. I wanted to do gymnastics and martial arts, and I remember asking my dad, "Can he, you know, because?" As a seven-year-old boy, you know, that can do anything, and I thought he could build me a lightsaber. And, and, and I've said this before, like, I said, Dad, 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 can you, can you make me one of those? Because it was back in the day, it was a, a white tube, a light bulb. And he goes, son, there's a lot of things I can do, but I can't do that. So and that's when I fell on with Star Wars, and, and here we are, you know, I'm 44, and I'm part of it, so. Your, your Instagram, you're like all over the lightsaber thing now. You like, how many do you own? You have, you have a few at home? Well, it's, that, yeah, I have a couple now. Um, what happened was at the last celebration, I was presented, gifted a lightsaber from a gentleman from Taiwan. Wow. And I've been seeing these fantastic lightsabers that everyone owns, but I just haven't, haven't got around to buying one or, you know, paying for one. Yeah, I'm very particular about what kind of style I want. And I thought it was the best gift ever to have this lightsaber. And then I was at a show recently, and the guy, uh, uh, Alan and his wife came up to me, and they were doing a photo of the lightsaber star. And I said, wow, this is really cool. Where, 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 where'd you buy these from? Because I make them. And so I went and said, can we, can, I'll come and see you afterwards. So I started playing around with the lightsaber, and he gave me as a gift. So I have, I have, you know, I have a, two, two, two doubles of different kinds. But I'm loving these new toys I have right now, so it's, and it's fun that you guys appreciate the video, so. Yeah, very cool. Do you, do you guys follow him on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Social? Do, if you don't, do it. It's very cool. What's that? Yeah, what I said, great as well. It's the, uh, I'm digging the white light at the moment. There's something about it, but I'm playing around with it. And, it's, uh, and also, being part of what I can or cannot say, if you haven't seen it, it's boosted, it's boosted myself, you know, because now it is possible. Whereas before it was a dream and, and now it's happened. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm testing myself. I keep on doing this because I like to say about action. But um, so this, I'm hoping to come back and I want to come up with some new, like a better or, or a different kind of style that, than I had before. But still essence of it.
to us on a program one day when this is how stunts are done. And I was kind of like heartbroken, you know, because some of my idols. And uh, so when you see Jackie Chan do it, and then you watch the end of the movie, and where the things go wrong, and he hurts himself, and he breaks his like a drunken bastard, he broke like ribs and vertebrae, and, like the knee. Yeah, serious. and he still carries on, you know. So I wanted to be like him. So many great things, and I love about your career. You've really captured like all the fan bases. You've done the Star Wars, done the Marvel stuff, little uh, X Men. Any X Men fans in the crowd? And I was kind of like pre, like you know, MCU. Now Marvel's like what it is on, on the big screen before. But what was it like at that time to be a part of a movie like that? Because back then, you know, superhero films were they weren't as maybe strong as they are now. Is it something that you knew would be a big thing when you did it? Uh, I knew, you know, at first I didn't. Want First, that Brian Arnold's going to come and play Pyro, so it's going to be, it was, uh, it was the release of Phantom Menace, and Brian Singer called me, uh, actually Ralph Quinton called me, executive producer, and he asked am I going to be in LA, and so I met Kevin Feige, he talked to the center, Brian Singer, and they offered me the part of Pyro, and I said, yeah, yeah, cool, I'm not going to say no, part, part, but I wanted to be Wolverine, you know, like, or Gambit, but so I'm, you know, second movie, so I thought, Went off and traveled a bit and did some conventions, and then they changed their mind and said, We want you to be told because of your physical ability, we could use that one for the character. And I didn't want to be told because of the way it was in the comic books. But Brian said, Well, it's an opportunity to show something different. And uh, so I was young, I was 25, I thought I knew I was listening to my agents. And uh, my big thing is, I didn't want to wear prosthetics. And uh, so I'm glad it's good to be part of it, it's good to work with. First, I was like, oh, you know, I might have to be the bad guy, Toe, but it was a good opportunity to do something different. And, and then, of course, going on from there, another uh, favorite, I'm sure, of everyone here, uh, G.I. Joe, which is an amazing film. How, how fun was it working on a film like that? Were you were you a fan of, like, Jet the Toys growing up? Did you watch the cartoon and all that stuff? Were you, were you, a, were you a fan? Yeah, that, and that's what I meant to answer with the X-Men thing, is I got to relive my childhood. Yeah. You know, like, G.I. Action Man was the first toys I had as a kid, and Batman, and Spider-Man, and Purple Hulk, and X-Men, and Star Wars, and Thundercats, and He-Man, and I've kind of lived my childhood again, so to audition for Snake Eyes and Land the Park was, was because of Darth Maul, and, uh, and I'm glad, I'm, I'm, proud of, I'm proud of Snake Eyes, it's, it lived, it's part of me in, in my training when I, when I work out, and, uh, and it's good to be the good guy. And a ninja. I wanted to be a ninja as a, as a kid, so um, yeah, I'd love to be part and hopefully they do it in the movie. Yeah, hopefully. And you know, it's speaking of like part of you, when you when you finish a project like G.I. Joe or Star Wars, do you do you take a little a little piece home with you at the end of it all? Or is they not I guess they're probably pretty sticky with what you can uh, walk away with on set, but do you take a little souvenir? Do you have anything at home? Do you have like a mask or a lightsaber from the film or anything like that? Well we weren't allowed to take anything from Star uh, Phantom Menace, you know, because they were checking your car every day. People were stealing stuff, but I, I had I had real swords at home anyway from China, so it was a prop. And I, of course, you know it'd be nice to have it, but I would never steal something. And I remember Rick McCallum, the executive producer, when we came back to do some pickup shots. He said, if you could have anything from your character, anything in yours, what would you like? And I said, can I have the contact lenses? Because I thought having the contact lenses would be better because. Back then, you couldn't get them, and if anyone gave you a bit of road rage, you just pop them in, throw them out the window. Because <laughs> it happened a lot back in the UK when I was younger, you know, people were speeding and giving you the finger, and then there was a lot of this. And so I just thought it'd be cool to keep in the car and just pop them in and then just look over. And, you know, but yeah, that was the only thing I wanted was a contact lenses. Then I was too shy to ask for them at the end. You know, I just forgot. I was too shy. I was like, I bet not ask for you. But sometimes the props, like I've got my um, stuff from Heroes, they give me. Uh, I tried to get the sword from Sleep Hollow. I wanted a sword from that, but I've learned you, got it, you have to have it in your contract. Because to build the suits cost a lot of money. And, um, and even the producers, if they buy them, they have to, they have to spend. And then the money 
goes to charity and stuff. But you know, I have I have a few things at home and things that fans make me as well, make for me, give to me, uh, replicas of the things I've done. Have you ever seen any any maybe memorabilia or anything come through at a con? Maybe maybe be brought to a table um, to get signed by you from the movies. Yeah, anything like that. A lot of that stuff ends up online. There's places like Prop Store where you can buy things for movies. So sometimes I, I find, you know, you hear about stories of items finding their way back to people. Has anything like that happened to you? If it does happen, I question it, and, and then I want proof if it's been bought uh, legally. Because I, I won't sign anything if it's been stolen. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Um, and also, the, yeah, once, once a gentleman came up and he said that I actually bought this, and it was my Snake Eyes uh, sweater that I wore in the first G.I. Joe movie when I went up into the handstand and swords. I said, really? And he said, yeah, I bought it, and I said, no way, so I questioned him about it, and then he gave it to me, so I wear it at night time. <laughs> but it, it's really big, it's really big, so I don't know if it's real, because I, I, I don't remember being, you know, it's like very baggy on me, but maybe it was one of the ones they bought in case I wore the suit, oh, yeah. and then they put over the suit, but, um, so he gave it to me, which was cool. That's maybe the most pajamas ever. Yeah, it's nice, I wear it at night, and I'd like this my zip up. Amazing. All right, well, we have, I know, a lot of audience questions as well. So we have two aisle mics. We have a mic over there and a mic over there. So if you have a question for Ray, you can uh, start lining up. Before we throw to audience questions, I was wondering if you could, uh, I, it's, a, it's a bucket list thing for me. Could, could you teach me like a really badass Darth Maul pose? Teach you, I've got some injuries right now, so I can teach you just we, like a... Like a basic one? Yeah. Can we do? Yeah, sure. Use the lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, let's, okay. Basic. Pretty simple, right? Okay. So you stand, face the front. Okay. Keep your feet together. Cross your arms. Right, I'm going to step back to the right. We're going to open our arms. Turn to the front. Oh. <laughs> I kind of call it the Bruce Lee Elvis. That's cool. I feel it. Yeah, you saw it. And normally the first warm-up one is not the best 
and then you get into it. And so that, that was the only thing I was uh, anxious about, was I wanted it to be spot on. And also, Carl says, watch out for Vader. Don't knock him over, because he's not ours. This is expensive. And I had to do it right beside Vader. You know, so. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing scene. All uh, right, let's go over to you. How did it feel to get cut in half? <laughs> uh, you know, I lost some weight, so it's been, been good. <laughs> It's been fun, yeah. It's been, uh, I feel very lucky to do, be doing the things I'm doing. So, and um, I've always kept in shape. My training's changed over the years, depending on what I've done. But it's not. It's nice now that I, um, I had an excuse to play with my lightsabers at home. You know. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, back over this side. So I'm kind of curious. Are they going to ever actually kill off Darth Maul? <laughs> yeah. You, have you seen Clone Wars? And rebels. Well, you know, it's the power of the dark side is strong. Fair enough. All right, over to you. My question is: During the filming of any of your movies, of all the hallowed scenes with choreography, has there ever been a time where you or one of your co-stars made an error that resulted in very funny or injurious moments? where something really funny happened, or one of you got hurt. No, but I've heard stories of other cast members and other movies being smacked and, and, and been hit and mistimed. I've heard stories about that, but not on Phantom Menace, no. We were all Jedi and Sith. We were perfect. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, cozy. Over, uh, over to you, what's your question? I noticed that you don't have, like, you have an accent right now, but you do not sound like um, Darth Maul. That's right, because I didn't voice Darth Maul. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> now you know, and no one's half the battle. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, flying through questions. Alright, over to you. So I just said, right, I'm getting it done. And I've been talking about it for years anyway, 
something that represents her, so and that's what I did. And she's born in the year of the monkey, and you know, and I like that. You know, I'm the year of the tiger, and my daughter's the year of the monkey as well. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna get something because uh, I was so want to get like, your name plastered right across my chest. Just joking, but I wanted something like unique and artistic, but not obvious to match. You know, my body and stuff, and matter tattoos. And I just decided. And normally I take a couple of years to think about it and place it and, and get the right uh, design. And I was feeling good and, I, and then I put a shout out and then one of my wife's clients recommended uh, Josh. And then, and then my wife texted me and she said, I like this. And I went, I like it too. And I said, that's what I'm getting. And then I started changing it up a little bit. I had the, I had the snake eye symbol in it and I was changing it up. I had dates in the tail and stuff. Tattoo artist said, um, he says, that's cool, but it's going to take, I think, the original looks better. Because I was trying to get, and I said, if I come back as Snake Eyes for the third time, then I'll get the Arachikaji. That was going to be my last tattoo, you know, and I made that was going to be the last one I was going to get. Um, you know, not like I, I just wanted to, actually, Dwayne Johnson was one of the reasons why I got my, my tattoo. Because I thought, if he can do it, and he looks awesome, I can do it. Because the big thing is, don't have tattoos when you're an actor. Because if you, you know, you know if you have your top off, you know, have them somewhere where you can't see. I, again, I was being rebellious, and, uh, and I said, I want to have my, I want to have my kids' names on me, but I want it to be done in a way you can't tell what the names are. I want it to look, be part of my body, like makeup or something, you know. So it was good. It was fun to get it done, and, and I was, I was buzzing afterwards. I was like, I can't believe I decided to get it done, and I was supposed to get it done last week. I was traveling and maybe I was being hesitant and then my wife got this app so I was putting it all over my body just to see where it looked with this app and then I did and I said all right I'll get it in a place that hurts the most and that's where I put it done. Anybody have any uh, any Ray Park tattoos? No? I mean there's gonna be somebody out there like a Darth Ball tattoo. Is it odd to see your face on somebody? Have you seen that yet? I've seen lots of really cool artwork of Darth on people's legs. Wow. People's arms. and legs. I think I've seen on the fly, but calves, yeah. And it's, it's, it's nice when it looks like me. Yeah, but it, it, I remember way back, I was like, wow, wow, that's dedication yeah, to have a character, you know. And, but now you see so much of it at conventions, it's just normal to see Star Wars tattoos, you know. And I was talking to the, art, the tattoo artist, he goes, there was a time when people were getting uh, like Bugs Bunny and Tasmanian Devil. And now things have changed in the tattoo world. The, the, the art is different, and people are asking for different things. And especially Star Wars, like, I see a lot of Star Wars tattoos. Yeah. Anyone have a Star Wars tattoo? Yeah. All right. Very cool. All right. Over to you. So I noticed you came in there with uh, quite a lot of it. it. Looks like survival gear. I wonder if you were uh, training on Dagobah or something. And uh, that's the second part. Is there any role that you think is undervalued that you wish people knew about more that you've done? Uh, I've not thought about that. There's stuff that I hope people haven't seen. You know, <laughs> I made some mistakes, but um, I recently did a movie. This it came out this year called Accident Man with Scott Atkins and Michael J. White, and I've been wanting to work with Scott for many years, and so. Um, a lot of fans, I try to promote movies, so if you haven't seen it, you can see it Voodoo, Scott's great in it, you know, I'm okay, Michael J. White's great in it, Amy Johnson's great in it, so, um, yeah, this, uh, this stuff, like Heroes was great to work on, and King of Fighters people don't know about as well, so, I've not, never thought about that. Thank you. We only have a few minutes left, so let's uh, let's try to do like a lightning round here. So let's go over to you. We'll go as fast as we can and we can get to everybody. So go ahead. Okay. Hi. I just found it really interesting hearing about how Jackie Chan and like your inspirations as a kid. Um, I just wanted to say that Star Wars and the Phantom Menace, specifically Darth Maul, had a huge effect on my childhood and a huge inspiration to me. Um, I spent the last like ten years becoming a professional performance artist and I've been training with lightsabers. Um, I was hoping to get a chance to show what I can do, but they say that I can't do that. But I hope at some point I get a chance to show you what you've inspired me to. You were talking about this earlier, the photo op, yeah? About the, the, are you around the weekend? I can come back if there's an opportunity to show you the other. 
Yeah, if you were to come back and out and, and, and I see you, I'd like you to show me on the floor. Did you do like your photo ops or like your signing? Like when are you going to be out on the floor? Uh, tomorrow I'll be back here around about 11 midday. -ish. Okay, cool, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. I'm glad I inspired you, buddy. Yeah. And what you did in the photo when you spun it effort like that, that was pretty cool. Oh, pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to demonstrate in front of you. That was pretty cool what you did there. That's awesome. I'm going to practice that at home. I'm breaking my lightsabers again. All right, back over to the side. My question is, what did you do to prepare for your role as Darth Maul in the Phantom Menace? I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was ready. I was already ready. I was um, 22. I was training all day. I was doing conditioning for three hours in the morning. Sleep. Then I would do wushu basics at, at lunchtime. Then I'd go to coach gymnastics. Then I'd come back and do gymnastic training with wushu. I was doing that seven days a week. On a Sunday was my day off, I would go straight highball diving and then go back and, and train. I was at that age where I was training all the time and then I was getting tired of competing. I was competing a lot. So I was about 21, I was in Malaysia, I was going to stay in Malaysia uh, and go to China for that because Jack had just finished uh, filming Police Story 5, I think it was in Malaysia at the time. So there's a buzz going on about it might happen again, so I thought if I stay there because that's where I used to train with my masters. And then um, I came home and uh, auditioned for Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And then um, I ended up doubling for Raiden and then playing one of the reptiles and one of the Barakas. And that kind of prepared me for Phantom Menace because I was able, I learned how to do uh, wire work, air rams, how stunts are done, and how to use my martial arts in a stunt way. And uh, so when I landed the role as Darth Maul, I was already doing that stuff every day anyway. And uh, it was actually, um, when I saw an image of Darth Maul, I kind of knew the character. It, it kind of fell and sunk in with me. And when, when we did the screen test, I kind of played him more as a distinguished gentleman. Like one of the Kung Fu masters that never look at you. Uh, you know, like one of, you know, like a ninja. And, uh, and then I got the part, and then he just became part of me. And it was actually rehearsing with Liam and Ewan brought out the character even more so because it wasn't just about fighting and doing and going super fast, it was also playing the part as well. So I was already ready for it. But first the recent thing I did when I was asked to, you know, but I but I want to do it, I trained hard every day. I was conditioning, you know, working my lightsaber skills just in case. But I was twenty two, I was straight out of competing, so I was already ready. All right, just a few minutes left, so let's go over to you. Go ahead. No. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> All right. So, but I can say, don't you people ever die? <laughs> Weren't you supposed to bring someone back with you? Quit playing around. Over to you. Hi. Um, just before my question, I'll say you're a huge inspiration. Thank you. Um, I've done 15 Thank years you. of martial arts because of a very bad car crash. And following your Instagram, it's actually been really amazing for me because watching you recover from your injuries has really motivated me to continue trying to recover from mine. So thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, my question is, in Rebels, I'm curious what your opinion is on Dave Filoni's handling the final confrontation of Maul and Obi-Wan. I liked it, and I spoke to Dave about it, and, and I, I, before speaking to him, I know exactly what, what direction he was going in, because he said, he, they, they did discuss, and he did say, like, people, everyone was expecting a big, you know, epic battle, but it was a case of Maul not learning, and because the way I played Maul as well, he was flamboyant and showing off overconfident, that, that justifies getting chopped in half. It was a tribute to the uh, the old samurai movies as well, where you know when the old Seven Samurai, where it does, it's not it's not flashy moves going on, it's just a lot of stillness, and so I, I liked it. I, I appreciate it. Thank All right, we're gonna you. wrap up. We're, we're good luck, to... yeah. Good luck with it, and, and don't overdo it. You know.
We gotta wrap up. We gotta, I think we can squeeze you guys in. So oh, let's go over to you. Uh, just saying, you look great. Just saying, it's great to be able to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, my question is, what was your relationship with George Lucas when you were making the movie? I was the actor. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, like, the relationship, he's the director, I'm the actor, and I do as I'm told. And so it was good to work with him. I was 22, so I was very shy. But I, I was, it was a big deal. It was a big movie, I knew it was a big acting job. It was my first, it could lead on to other things, maybe lead on to being like doing Van Damme kind of movies or Chuck Norris. And, and so I wanted to make sure I did everything right and correct and perfect. And, uh, and even when I was saying the dialogue, knowing it wasn't going to be my voice, I even wanted to make sure that was done right. Was it good? I, you know, is that okay? So I wanted to make sure. And Ian McDermott said to me, he goes, like, one thing I've known working with George, if he doesn't come up and say anything to you, you're doing okay. You know, so I didn't, wasn't always looking for, like, yeah, well done, well done, pat on the back. You know, I just did my job, so I enjoyed it. And I worked, I, I worked closely with Nick Gillard as well, because there was a lot of action. I was just in awe, with, you know, I'm on this movie, I can't believe it, no one's going to believe me. Right, so, um, it was a big deal for me at the time, it still is. And you're dressed up as Darth Maul, which is unbelievable. But good. Alright, thank you so much, and last question, uh, over to you. Hey Ray, uh, I was just curious, what was your favorite move versus, like, battle sequence to do in Phantom Menace? Because I would probably guess it was the uh, 180 backspin where you Step back and switch. You, you know what? We called that the 3 2 1 or 1 2 3 fight, and we kind of made up the fights in a, a unique, different order. We would just be spontaneous with the way we would choreograph and stuff. But um, working with doing the, the Qui Gon fight was a different style, it was more technical because of the way Qui Gon fought. But it was with you, and I like that. That's, if you can see in the movie, I'm doing this, and that's me saying to you, Come on, let's go. I'm gonna take you. Come on, come on, let's do this. And he's breathing, doing this, and I'm saying that. So if you watch again, and I'm standing going like this, I didn't know that they were going to shoot me. So I'm like, come on, let's go, let's go. And, uh, and it was, that was the fun, it was fun to do. Enjoy it. It was intense because he was coming at me. You know, he he was he was in it, and I was in it, and I was like, I was like, I bet you do this. I made sure I'm good. You know, and for a moment now I felt a little worried, you know, because, uh, but it was good, it was intense, and I enjoyed it. Ian's good, he's good, he's good at what he does. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, well, you can uh, find Ray back on the floor in the uh, autograph and uh, photo op areas, and uh, give it up one more time. Ray Parker!